Prague, Hundred Towered, Golden, Magical. The Heart of Europe, one of the most beautiful and most visited cities in Europe. Its unique historical center is concentrated into a small area. Romanesque churches and Gothic cathedrals intermingle with Renaissance and Baroque palaces, Rococo villas, and Art Nouveau buildings. The name Prague ostensibly comes from the Czech word prach, which means threshold or shoal. It may refer to the rocky shoals of the Vltava riverbed or the stone thresholds of old houses. Some say Prague is the threshold of the mystic world. Built on a stone promontory above the Vltava River, Prague Castle is the oldest historically recorded location connected to Christianity. Vyshehrad was another center of royal power. In the 11th and 12th centuries, this fortified point located across the river was the temporary main residence of Bohemia's rulers. Later, on the same side of the Vultava, a settlement arose around a medieval market. As a city, it was fortified with walls and 13 towers. On the side of one, the so-called worn-out tower, a Gothic structure was built called the Powder Tower because it served to store gunpowder. The coronation procession of Bohemia's kings and queens passed through this monumental gate as they toured the town on their way to St. Vitus Cathedral at Prague Castle. Rich burghers and aristocrats built splendid palaces along the royal way. The buildings along medieval Seligna Street are Gothic in origin, although today visitors admire their splendid Baroque facades. Like the processions of the Bohemian kings, the steps of every visitor lead inevitably to spacious Old Town Square. The five buildings which make up the centerpiece Old Town Hall are Gothic in origin. The last and most beautiful of the five is Umenuti, featuring a Renaissance graffito facade. One of the 20th century's most famous writers, Prague native Franz Kafka, lived here. The four-sided tower of the town hall, 69 and a half meters tall, was built in the 14th century. A remarkable astronomical clock was built onto the front of the tower at the beginning of the 15th century. Every hour, a moving figure of death tolls a bell, and above it, Christ and the apostles file past two small windows. Other figures represent human vices. The performance ends with the crowing of a cock. The central part of the clock shows current and medieval time, as well as the motions of the moon and sun. The lower section, the zodiac, as depicted by 19th century painter Josef Manes, turns once per year. Many legends are connected to the astronomical clock. The best known tells of Master Hanush, the builder of the remarkable timepiece. The town councillors ordered him to be blinded with a burning poker so that he would never again construct such an incredible mechanism. A statue of Jan Hus dominates the center of the square. Thanks to Hus, Prague became the first center of the Catholic Reformation. Hus was burned as a heretic by the Council of Constance in 1415. The most majestic edifice on the square is the Gothic Church of Our Lady before Teen. It was a center of Protestantism in the 14th and 15th centuries. Renowned Danish astrologer and astronomer Tycho Brahe is buried here.
By the 11th century, the original church was part of a unique complex of medieval foreign trade called the Ungelt. The Renaissance Granovsky Palace is the highlight. The enclosed courtyard housed inns for merchants, a medieval customs house, workshops, warehouses, and stables. The Ungelt became part of UNESCO's World Heritage in the 1960s. The only residence on the Old Town Square with its original Gothic facade is the house at the Stone Bell. According to legend, a bell from the adjacent teen church fell on it. It is the most important Gothic tower house east of the Rhine. Some say it was built by the last premislide queen, Eliska Przemyslovna. Her son, Emperor Charles IV, stayed here. The Rococo Goltz Kinski Palace makes a fine contrast. Historically interesting buildings on the south side of the square include the highly picturesque Storkhaus, decorated with frescoes by Mikolaj Alesh, depicting alchemist workshops and St. Wenceslas. There are Gothic fragments here as well. Frescoes by Alesh adorn Rothaus as well, located on neighboring small square. The Pearl of Prague Baroque architecture, the Church of St. Nicholas, stands on the same side of Old Town Square. Beyond the church lies the site of the former Jewish ghetto. At the beginning of the 20th century, the area was transformed when the old Jewish quarter was completely redeveloped. Unfortunately, all that remains of the old Jewish quarter, called Yosefov, are six synagogues, the town hall, and the old Jewish cemetery. Approximately 20,000 gravestones can be found in the 15th century cemetery, but roughly 100,000 people are buried here. To compensate for the lack of space, some areas of the cemetery have graves arranged in layers, one on top of another. Famed Rabbi Lowe is interred in a Baroque tomb. He was the creator of the golem, that superhuman creature made of clay. According to legend, Gollum is hidden in the attic of the old new synagogue. Dating from the 13th century, it is the oldest synagogue in Prague. If we return to the old royal way, we pass along the bustling and romantic Karlova Street, bordered in part by a huge center of Jesuit Catholic learning, the Clementinum. The most important ruler of the crown lands of Bohemia, Holy Roman Emperor Charles IV, passed by these sites as well. In the second half of the 14th century, he spanned the Vltava River with a stone bridge grander than any other in Central Europe. The emperor assigned the task of building the bridge to Peter Parler, the brilliant architect of St. Vitus Cathedral. A tower marks each end of the bridge. In the Middle Ages, the tower served as defenses and for toll collection. Located on the right bank of the Vltava, the Old Town Tower is considered the most beautiful Gothic tower in Central Europe. The shorter tower on the lesser town side is Romanesque and dates from the 12th century. It is a remnant of the original stone Judith Bridge. It has been joined by a 15th century tower. The sculptural decoration on the Charles Bridge is Baroque. All the statues depict saints. Each statue has its own story, and some of them bring luck.
One of the oldest is the bronze statue of St. John Nepomuk from the workshop of Jan Brokov. According to legend, Wenceslas IV had him murdered in a rage because Nepomuk refused to divulge the secrets of the Queen's confessional. Actually, it concerned a conflict between the sovereign and the church. Just off the Charles Bridge is the quiet area called Kampa, with its many picturesque nooks and corners. After passing through wide Mostetska Street, the royal procession arrived at Lesser Town Square, the center of Prague's Lesser Town. The square is divided into two parts by one of Prague's architectural centerpieces, St. Nicholas Church, with its massive green dome and slender tower. Designed by Krzysztof and Kilian Ignaz Dietzenhofer, this impressive structure is considered Bohemia's most beautiful Baroque work. Its magnificent architecture is in harmony with the exquisite interior. The frescoes in the dome, for example, feature the celebration of the Holy Trinity. Prague isn't famous merely for its architecture and fine arts. For centuries, it has attracted the foremost personalities of European culture. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart even played the church organ here. While in Prague, he composed his best-known opera, Don Giovanni, and dedicated it to my Praguers. Prague will celebrate the 250th anniversary of his birth in 2006 with the grand citywide Mozart festival. Steep and picturesque, Nerudova Street was the final stretch traveled by the royal entourage. In the Middle Ages, various poetic house markers were used instead of street numbers. Finally, the king's retinue arrived at their goal, Prague Castle, the seat of princes, kings, and presidents. The founding of Prague Castle is closely linked to Christianity. The rotunda of St. Vitus dates from this period and is the first sacred structure with a round floor plan. It was built by the patron of Bohemia, St. Wenceslaus. A chapel housing his remains is the jewel of the interior of the Cathedral of Saints Vitus, Adalbert, and Wenceslaus. It was built by Charles IV in the 14th century. Frescoes painted around the lower chapel walls are adorned with semi-precious bohemian stones set in gilded plaster. The upper walls are decorated with frescoes drawn from the life of St. Wenceslas. A side door, secured with seven locks, opens onto a stairway leading to a chamber where the crown jewels are kept. St. Wenceslas' crown is made of over four pounds of pure gold and is decorated with 96 gems and pearls. Of the nine biggest sapphires in the world, the Bohemian crown has six. Its ruby is the biggest gem in the world used as jewelry. Premislied princes and kings, interred in the cathedral's chapels, ruled Prague from Prague Castle until 1306. In the 14th century, Charles IV, King of Bohemia and Holy Roman Emperor, made Prague the political and cultural center of the empire. For several decades, Prague was the capital of all Christian Europe. St. Vitus Cathedral is the most significant church structure in the Czech Republic. 600 years passed between the laying of the cornerstone and putting on the finishing touches. The church has outstanding artistic decoration. An incomparable medieval mosaic radiates above bold Gothic arches, the Last Supper fashioned of Bohemian glass. A monumental external support system allows for the lofty nobility of the nave, which is decorated with lacy pinnacles and gargoyles. The most magnificent secular Gothic building in Prague is Vladislav Hall in the old royal palace. 
The hall was used on special occasions, such as feasts for coronations and weddings. From here we move on to St. George Square, home to the All Saints Church and the Romanesque Basilica of St. George and the Theresian Female Institute. Picturesque Golden Lane is tucked in behind St. George's Basilica. In the tiny houses, literally cemented to the fortifications, lived marksmen of the castle guard. Legend claims that alchemists tried to make gold here for that eccentric scholar and world art collector, Rudolf II. In Blue Painted No. 22, Franz Kafka wrote some of his works. At the beginning of the 20th century, Golden Lane was a deserted spot where Nobel Prize winner Jaroslav Seifert found himself a pleasant place to write. Poor people and servants once lived near the castle in a quaint quarter called New World. Rudolf II's world-renowned astronomer, Tycho Brahe, lived here at the House at the Golden Leg. Choral singers from the nearby Loretta Church once lived in New World as well. Loretta, a 17th century Marian pilgrimage site, is one of Prague's most lovely Baroque structures. It is interesting for its marvelous sculptural decoration and for the Marian melody which chimes every hour. A street named after the church leads to vast Haradchani Square, which is dominated by grand aristocratic palaces. A plague column dedicated to the Virgin rises in the center of the square. It was created by Ferdinand Maximilian Brokov, one of Bohemia's foremost Baroque sculptors. After following the long and opulent way of the kings, we can rest in one of Prague Castle's lovely gardens. On the northern side of the castle complex, the gorgeous royal gardens extend toward the Renaissance Belvedere Palace, or as it is called, Queen Anne's Summer House. The most extensive gardens are at Wallenstein Palace. They are decorated with replicas of sculptures by Adrian de Vries and a man-made stalactite grotto. An outstanding view of the Mannerist Church of Our Lady Victorious opens up before visitors to the opulent Baroque Vertba Gardens. The church is home to the famous Baby Jesus, or Bambino di Praga, as it is better known. This wax sculpture is famed throughout the Catholic world for its ability to perform miracles. People from all over the globe have given the Bambino colorful outfits richly decorated with pearls, gold, and diamonds. Admittedly, the time of princes, kings, and emperors is long past, but tired visitors to this magical city may relax in countless cafes and pubs and refresh themselves with a cool draft. Many pubs have been in business for centuries and entice patrons with a wide variety of specialties. Renowned brew pub Ufleku, for example, makes an outstanding dark beer. Anyone with the energy to continue on into the night may take advantage of a wide range of bars and other night spots on Wenceslas Square. Prague, hundred-towered, golden, magical, the heart of Europe. Every day the sun shines down on narrow streets and palaces as the town comes once again to life. Today, just as it did centuries ago. The history of one of Europe's most beautiful cities slowly continues on.